Up next, Abyss takes on his mystery opponent, Ken Anderson. I've always had a soft spot for Mr. Ken Anderson. He's an average wrestler, but he's a great talker. You can't deny it, or else you're lying to yourself. I like the way he premiered here, and the crowd ate it up. But I think he should have been on the January 4th Impact, building to his first match tonight against someone besides Abyss. Their styles are just too different, they don't match up well, and it shows here. Ken relied on punches and kicks and didn't really pull out much wrestling through most of the bout. And while some will argue that Ken had ring rust, I'd argue that he's never had much to rust to begin with. The way the match ended was believable and passable, and I can see them continuing the feud down the road, unfortunately. I think he should be feuding with someone else, and I'm giving this a 5 out of 10. Finally, we come to the main event. AJ Styles defends his TNA World Heavyweight title against Kurt Angle with the stipulation that if AJ retains, Kurt can't fight for the title for the rest of the year as long as Styles is champ. I don't like the stipulation, but it did make me figure Kurt would be winning the title back tonight. On a quick side note, they show Angle walking to the entrance backstage, and he spits, which I find kind of rude. I realize people do it all the time. I mean, I do it when I'm outside, but not in a building, and definitely not on camera. But anyway, on to the match. It starts off slow with AJ matching Kurt almost move for move, proving that they are equally matched, and then it's back and forth building excitement. When AJ goes for a flip dive over the ropes, it looks like he lands badly on Kurt, because Kurt goes right to his knee as if in pain. Towards the end, Angle gives AJ his own move, the Styles Clash, and AJ responds by giving Angle his move, the Angle Slam, which I found to be really nice. The end sees Ric Flair, who had come down earlier, interfere and help AJ retain. What's most amusing is that while they pull a heelish tactic by costing Angle the win and having an unclean finish, the audience still cheers for AJ, so it has the opposite effect they were probably hoping for. How do I feel about AJ turning? I don't think he'll be a complete heel. With Flair behind him as his mentor, he'll be just like Rick was back in the 80s. Sometimes good, sometimes bad, but always for himself. It could work. I'm giving this match an 8 out of 10. Overall, TNA still has a lot to correct, but they're on the right track. Half of the card is simple matches without hokey stipulations, and they're not trying to cram every wrestler onto the show. There's still a few setbacks. The lead up to this event was lackluster, and some of the matches suffer because of it. They chose to focus on premiering too many new wrestlers, when that time should have been reserved for people with more crowd appeal. I would have included a Young Bucks Motor City Machine Gun match and done a bit of reshuffling of the card. They have to make coherent stories and they really need to work on building to the next event. But it can be done rather easily and they've got plenty of time to do it. At the end of the day, this is miles above Final Resolution or even the January 4th episode of Impact. And while the numbers I gave add up to a 6, I'm feeling charitable and bumping it up to a 7 out of 10. Is it worth buying the replay? Eh, not really, but I have no qualms about buying the DVD when it comes out. Since I've had to split this up into two parts, I figured I'd include what my Genesis card would have been with a little bit of lead up to it. Like I mentioned earlier, I would have had three impacts to build from, one on the 4th, one on the 7th, and one on the 14th giving me a passable number of shows to build my card. I'd open up my show with the Motor City Machine Guns taking on the Young Bucks. None of the silly Generation Me crap. I'd have them go out there and wow the crowd for a solid 15 minutes. This would be a rematch from either the second or third Impact show, which the Bucks would narrowly win. Then the Guns would win tonight. Up next would be Tara defending her knockout title against Hamada, who would have won the tournament back on the New Year's Eve show. ODB would have gotten her rematch at the January 4th show and lost, but beaten Tara down. This would go for about 15 minutes and Hamada would come close to winning, but Tara would retain. But before Tara can celebrate, ODB comes running down and attacks her, grabbing the belt, and lays out Hamada. On the January 4th impact, Abyss would be attacked by Dr. Stevie and Raven as he's coming down to the ring for a match. Then Jeff Hardy and Shannon Moore would come to his aid. Jeff would cut a promo saying that while he's here tonight, due to events in his personal life, he might not be around, 
but if luck is on his side, he'll return when they least expect it. He'd say that he and Abyss have had their share of confrontations in the past. It's all water under the bridge and they shake hands. On the next episode, Amazing Red gets attacked backstage by Brian Kendrick, who gets chased off by Abyss. Abyss and Red form a friendship, kind of, when Red says that Don West has all but deserted him, despite him having the X Division title. Abyss tells him he knows all about unreliable managers, mentioning Jim Mitchell, and says they should look out for each other. The final week, Red and Kendrick face off in a non-title match with Abyss in Red's corner. Red pulls out the win, but Kendrick low blows him before he can celebrate. Brian beats a hasty retreat but grabs a mic and challenges both men to a tag team match at Genesis. He says that he's got the perfect guy in mind. At Genesis, Brian reveals his partner to be none other than Ken Anderson. They go on to cheat to win in a 15 minute match. Up next, Hernandez would take on Sean Morley in a solid 15 minute match. Through all three episodes, Sean would be at Hernandez's heels until he finally challenges Morley to a match at Genesis. British Invasion would defend their TNA Tag Team titles against both Beer Money and Kevin Nash and Sean Waltman. It would originally be Beer Money winning a number one contenders match against Hernandez at Morgan on the January 4th Impact, but Nash would cash in his Feast or Fired contract, saying that he and Waltman would take the titles easily. British Invasion will ultimately retain when Beer Money and Nash and Waltman are more concerned with upstaging each other allowing the British Invasion to sneak in the win in this 20-minute match. After that, Matt Morgan and Daniels face each other in a number one contenders match. After Morgan's loss on the January 4th impact, Daniels would be critical of him on the next episode. Morgan would counter that Daniels lost twice on consecutive pay-per-views and it would just escalate from there. Hogan would intercede and offer a solution. At Genesis, they'd decide who the better man is. Morgan would win this 15 minute match and become number one contender, giving Daniels his third consecutive loss. He'd go ballistic, grab a chair, and just lay out Morgan. And he'd keep hitting him until officials came out to get him off a now unconscious Morgan. D'Angelo De Niro would face Desmond Wolf in their rubber match. Their first match would be on the January 4th Impact, where Desmond would win through less than ideal means. Then on the next Impact, they'd have their rematch, and D'Angelo would gain the victory. Ultimately, Desmond would win the final 20-minute match here, and he'd cut a promo saying that he's setting his sights on the TNA title, regardless of who's ahead of him. Finally, AJ Styles would defend his TNA World Heavyweight title against Kurt Angle in a 30-minute epic. They'd face off on the January 4th Impact with a promo, but they'd save the match for the pay-per-view. Ric Flair would be backstage and align himself with AJ, telling the audience he only surrounds himself with the best, and that is AJ. Samoa Joe would get involved, talking Kurt into allowing him to be in his corner since AJ had Flair. Kurt would be wary of Joe, but over the course of the next two episodes, would hesitantly accept his proposal. Later in the Genesis match, Joe would try to interfere, not for Angle's benefit, but in an attempt to make the match either a no contest or disqualification. Angle attacks Joe, allowing AJ to recuperate and ultimately afterwards pick up the victory. Rick would put the title around AJ and excitedly tell the camera that 2010 would be a styling year for AJ. That would leave about 30 minutes which I would devote to hype up the main event and some of the other choice matches with promotional packages. I'd probably give Hogan about 10 of those minutes since I know he's going to want to talk and open up the show. I hope you liked my review and my offering at what Genesis could have been. Thank you for listening and don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe.